We are back live at YCS Prague at the second day of competition and you can tell the breaks in between rounds are getting shorter and shorter which Definitely. is not that surprising because we only got 128 players remaining in competition. For this round, because we don't really have any time, the main event is already 36, 35 minutes yep. remaining so we want to catch up with them. We picked the Shadol player, Sepp Dang, who is still on the bubble. Yes. We wanted to feature him last round, but his opponent didn't show up. Which was fine, because that meant he was still on the bubble, and we can bring him to you right now. However, yeah, th that story goes on a little bit longer, because uh, the opponent did, in fact, show up. Really? Just like one minute later or something. So he got away without a warning. or a, uh, Well, he did get a warning, but without a game loss. Yeah. And uh, Sepp said, I have to admit, I was extremely lucky in that game. Like really? He, he uh, sent two Shadows from the top of his deck to the graveyard with a Light Sworn effect, for example, and things like that. And he said it wouldn't have been a good feature match. Everybody would have said, I'm only here because I'm super lucky. Right, okay. <laughs> so he really wants to bring it in with skill this he time around. Exactly. He wants to show us that he can do it. So let's take a look at the table where he's seated. And he's going up against one of the super strong players from Greece, Temistoklis Gigtsis. You want to try again with the name? I'll just leave no. it at that. Geekses. <laughs> I don't know whether the G is silent. That's, uh, All right. We he can ask him later. is playing the elephant in the room, the blue elephant in the room, I should say, because it is Necros. He starts with a Senju of the Thousand Hands to add a Bryonek to his hand. He discards the Bryonek and he goes searching again. You can tell the energy is here. Yeah, he, he's really, really... He's ready for this. <laughs> his opponent, Sepp, However, it's got a max C, so something that only a few players main deck today, at least a few of the uh, Necros players. Now, issuing the max C challenge on the first turn when you <laughs> know you're not going to be able to attack the game is, uh, is going to be a, a difficult choice. I mean, he doesn't really want to special summon anymore unless he can go straight for a gin lock. Yeah, and the thing is that Temistoklis doesn't know that his opponent is running um, Shadows. So he sometimes you see them go continuing with that line of play regardless, even yeah. though they know that the opponent has a max C. Now, uh, he, Themistoklis doesn't actually know whether he's not playing against Necros again. So, he may, oh, he's going preparation for it. So he is, uh, he is looking to possibly have something on the field. Yeah. So what did he draw into with that? Tributes for Necros of Valkyros. He's got a dance princess of the Necros now. And the preparation of rights, oh, he already had that in his hand. So now he goes searching for the Necros Mirror in his graveyard and the corseless from, from his, his deck. deck. Okay. Now it's interesting because a lot of players actually told me that they weren't going to play Dance Princess, uh, but we've seen here on some of the ones that are doing very, very well that they are all playing it. But again, we've never seen it summoned. <laughs> so uh, Timmy Stoklis gets away with only special summon, only one special summon on his first turn, yep. and it's back to Seb for the first time, and here's a card that we haven't seen all weekend. However, we have seen it quite a few times. Ooh, and there is a Nef Shuttle Fusion, which is going with, which means that he can actually name the attribute. Yeah, N Nef Shuttle Fusion. Also not a card we have seen that often so far. No, it's actually an extremely good card that came out in Secrets of Eternity. So mm -hmm. this is the first European YCS debut for it. So you change the attribute of a Shadow Monster, and you can fusion summon a Shadow Fusion Monster using monsters from your hand or your side of the field, including the equipped monster. Yep. And you don't need um, a fusion spell card. Now you can only use this effect of <coughs> Shadow oh, Shadow Fusion once per turn. I think what he was actually uh, checking there, I believe, is that the Nef Shadow Fusion. Uh, can actually activate both of its effects in one turn, which it, it can, um, which is changing the attribute and fusion summoning. So yeah. out comes the El Shadol Construct. Now, the I believe that uh, Sepp is really, really going for it right now. Yeah, as, as Sepp says this is an explosive deck. It's not going to be like, wait, 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 and see what happens. It is go big or go home. Which uh, I, I can see where he's uh, coming from. I mean, what he's really doing is he's taking advantage of the fact that nobody wants anything on the field just in case there's a Trishula yeah. and just but the fact that to hit hard. Tim has returned the Valkyrus to his hand, that's not exactly great for Seb, is it? No, not at all. Well, we, mm, let's see what he gets. So there was a Hedgehog. 
I'm not even. It was uh, fused together with uh, the monster on the field for the El Shadol construct. I no, I believe that was a Falco that he sent to the graveyard, um, which then came back out. Uh, El Shadol construct, I believe, then sent that. All right. He now has a Shell Beast fusion and two copies of Mathematician together with a Squamata in hand. Yeah, he sent the beast to the graveyard, uh, which meant it sent a beast to the graveyard, meaning he, he could mm. draw as well. So there's an attack, and that means Timis is left with 5,200 life points. And, and he's uh, taken it. Yeah, well, I mean, why not? He's still got... He's still got plenty of life points. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as we said yesterday, life points are just a resource. It's only a problem when you have zero. <laughs> yeah, exactly at that point in time. Unless you're running cards like Solemn Warning, which we also haven't really seen this weekend. I think no. like once. No. I mean, also, if you're running Reversal Quiz. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a little prime of the things to come later today, because we do have a reversal. How how was it in that little black room where you were learning the inner workings of that deck? It was dark and cold, but I learned some things. All right. So what is uh, Tamis thinking here? He drew into, he's got a dark hole and Trishula in hand. Now I think he drew into the dark hole because he doesn't have any ways to search for it. Yep. So there is the Necros mirror. There is no Necros of the dark hole. <laughs> All right, and the interesting thing is that Sepp has very few ways to interact with his opponent's place on the opponent's turn, except Ooh, for that El Shadol fusion. Yep, that's a Shekinaga. Shekinaga's big. He mentioned that card when he when I was talking to him. He said Shekinaga is the difference maker for me. It is the card that scored me most of my victories this weekend. Now let's bring it up. When we, yeah, we, we when wait we for it on the app. Yes. And once we got it here, we can supersize it, just like a giant card, really. Transmit it directly to your screen. <laughs> yeah, and at the same time, Temis is still hard at work, continuing to thin out his deck and make use of the many Necros. There's there Shekinaga. There's Shekinaga, so here we go. And yeah, during either the player's turn, when a special summoned monster activates its effects, while you have a shadow card in your hand, you, you can negate, negate the, the activation. activation. Destroy the card. So he's basically going to be uh, stopping Valkyrus's effect, I believe. Yeah. Because often the... It's not like these uh, Necros monsters just hit the field and you cannot do anything. Because they always hit the field after a ritual summon, you always first can respond, set up something like a Shekinaga, and then they hit the field. And the Necros player was thinking, yes, Trishula is going to win me the game yeah. right there. He's like, no, no not exactly. Not. No, it's not at all. Yeah. And there's the Dark Hole. Yeah, that Dark Hole is really crucial now. At least Sepp is going to get some effects from his Shadow monsters being sent to the graveyard. Yeah. Falco as well. Yeah, this is the reason why Dark Hole is allowed twice. It really doesn't do as much as it used to. The damage, the bleeding has been stopped immediately by the effects, the graveyard effects, I should say, of those Shadow Monsters. Now, he has actually, by bringing that Falco back, set him up for a Trishula. Which may be something that we'll see now. Yep, there's the Manji of the 10,000 hands. Yeah, but... There's only so much you can do when you're in, in Sepp's position here. He, I think he had a great line of plays where he was able to stop, interfere with his opponent's plans. Yeah. Now, just uh, to say, because uh, a lot of times when Necros players are playing, they will just drop cards straight from the deck to the graveyard to indicate that they're discarding them. That was a Clausulus that went to the graveyard, which got a Kaleidoscope. And here comes Unicorn, which is really, really not what you want to see when you're playing Shadow. No, definitely not. And also, even Shekinaga doesn't really help against it, does it? No, because it's not an activated effect. Yes. Well, it's got 3,000 defense. So you're not going to run it over with anything other than a decisive armor. Yeah. <laughs> or you make your opponent believe that he has a decisive yeah, armor. Yeah, decisive <laughs> armor. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to attack over it. So here we can see the, the graveyard of the Shadow player, uh, of the Necros player of Tim is being filled up quite a bit already and half of the cards in there will actually be able to, to put in some more work for him. There's the cycle. Sure it. Trishula. 
Mm. That really hurts, yeah. Yeah. Seb cannot be enjoying this. This is not a good moment for him. Yeah. So the construct, the Falco on the field. Would it have been better for Seb? Well, can he opt to not special summon anything? I don't believe that Falco is. Well, we can just quickly check before it comes off there. You can, you can you special can. summon. So yeah. it might have been the better choice to not special something back? Yep, uh, which is what I was saying before, though. He, by special summoning that Falco, he did actually set himself up straight for that Trish there. Yeah, that's something you really need to keep in mind. You Sometimes you really want to pass without a field. Back in the days, that was like, I got a Gorse. Now it's, you have a tri tri Trishula. Yeah. <laughs> But even then, still, it can still mean that you've got a gauze. I mean, gauze would definitely help in this situation. Yeah. So, good position for Timis. Tschüss. <laughs> Gukzis. I want to say Gukzis, but the problem is it's G K Y, not the other way around. I'm just going to say Gukzis from now on. We're just channeling uh, a bit of Matt Bell. Yeah. Channeling a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the preparation of rides for Timis to pull even further ahead here. So he's already ha ahead on the field with uh, three monsters and uh, also three cards in hand. Whereas Seb has four cards in hand. But you need to be careful. You don't want to expose yourself in any way against the Shadow deck that is so explosive. And that's why he's going for Necros of Valkyrus. This card, so, so important. And one of the main reasons why the Necros deck is this successful. Because you can make sure that you're not going to lose the game on the spot. I do believe that that's he's going to be able to attack the game next turn. Yeah, so there, there's an Elshadol fusion which will get rid of the Unicorn. Uh, well, no, it won't be. Yeah, because he'll, he'll be able to attack with Construct straight over it. But he knows that there's a Valkyrus. Valkyrus, yes. It. But um, can you then use the El Shadow Fusion in the battle phase to remove the target for Valkyrus? I believe you can. Yeah, the question is, he well, he would then only be able to bring out a Shekinaga. Yeah. But is there any alternative here? Mathematician is the alternative. Okay. Yeah. Mathematician using it just to have a look around. What? targets does he have for Mathematician here? He's got a glow-up bulb. Glow bulb. <laughs> okay, so he's uh, looking at glow-up bulb. And that allows him to get a Synchro Monster, but again, although he could Shekinaga. Yep. Shekinaga, glow-up bulb, and just make something absolutely massive. In fact, hmm. so there's another Shikinaga and the claw bulb returns to the field and he sends a light swan, a lila is that, if I'm not mistaken? That is a lila, yes. To the graveyard. So two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven stars. Is there anything you want to... Synchro summon with 11 stars? Mm, Not that I'm aware sure. of. I don't think he has a target with 11, no. No. Not very odd. All right. Well, there's always a chance that he's just setting himself up for a... Uh, defensive play where he's just like I can take the the next few attacks and lose my monsters but I don't think that's what he's trying to go for he's got a vanity's emptiness now which is unfortunately a little bit too late the last turn it could have 
made all the difference. He does have the Alshadol fusion, as we've just said. Mm -hmm. What he set himself up for is to bring out a second Sekinaga. Because that's an Earth monster. Yeah. Yep, and there's the Valkyrus. And I believe at this point, just like the Gunyir, if he was to use the Alshadol fusion, his attack would still go through. Yep, there it is. Or he's synchroing. Oh, Star Eater has 11 stars. <laughs> so much for that theory. He's got a Star Eater, three face down cards. This is the hand that is now on the field the El Shadow Diffusion, the Core, and the Vanity's Emptiness. And the Star Eater. Let's bring that big guy up. Cards and effects cannot be activated when it's Synchro Summon. And if it's attacks, it is unaffected by other cards. Okay. So, okay, so, what's the answer to that? Is that a Castell, the Skyblaster Musketeer? Yeah, unfortunately, there there isn't much answers to that. Yeah, uh, and I mean, if he would have thought to activate Vanity's emptiness beforehand, maybe. Yeah, and again, we see a player revealing his back row before he sides for the second game. I don't approve of that, although. Yeah, no, I don't approve of that. No, no, you don't <laughs> want to give your opponent more information than they need. Uh, but looking at it... Um, mm, I if, mean, if it weren't for the it Dark Hole, uh, this game could have easily gone Seb's way. The, the Dark Hole was... The was Dark Hole was what? Yeah, what bro lost broke his back, really. Otherwise, he, he would have been in a perfect place. But the Dark Hole and then the setup for a Trishula for his opponent, that was when he was switching roads and he was on the wrong road, not the one that was leading to victory. Now, very, very interesting. Um, just looking at it, I believe that Louis Starkless has actually just smokescreened his opponent by shuffling his entire side deck into his deck and taking out 15 cards. Yeah. So um, what's there in the extra deck? Is there anything for Sepp that further improves the matchup against Necros? Course, because yeah. I... I Expect him to be prepared for that matchup. He's got a Vanity's Fiend. Haiku the Ghost Destroyer. Interestingly enough, he and runs Gauze. He runs Gauze, yes. But I don't, I don't think Gauze is that much of a help, is it? Yeah, it will stop some major. I mean, in, in his deck, it makes sense because he just needs. Very often, he just needs one more turn, and then he can push through. So he doesn't mind if if Gauze is not as effective as it used to be. Yeah, compulsory evacuation device. It only needs to end the battle phase. For Themistocles, there is two Vanity's Emptiness, another Book of Eclipse, Mirror of the Ice Barrier, Denko Seca. Denko Seca definitely would be a good choice. Yes. Twister, just to get rid of the Vanity's. So also running Typhoon as well. Also, interestingly enough, because there are not that many Greek players in attendance, uh, we just learned that Gizis won a YC, uh, Temis Gizis won a YCS trial in Madrid. However, he already booked for Milan and London as well. So he, we couldn't really fly him there because he already had made all the necessary arrangements. And instead we flew him out to Prague. So this is his, his gay, uh, th this is the tournament that he got for winning the YCS trial. Hmm. Sepp, not looking too happy with the game one there. No. Let me start this looking very confident though. Yeah, w once these guys are in the zone and, and they have figured out what they are up against, and well, you, you definitely want to take the first game from the Necros player because that's mostly where your deck, if it's not Necros, is best prepared for that matchup. So what do you expect for the second game here? Hmm. It's interesting because now 
I think Themistoclus is ready for a Shadow matchup. It's probably one of the things that he was testing against immediately. And I'm assuming that Sep really, really was looking at Necros. As you say, you had a chat with him about it. Yeah. He said that Shekinaga is the key card, really. That people don't see it coming and that it can catch them by surprise and then... Well, unfortunately, now that he's a... Uh, Themistoclus knows that it's there. Yeah. It's uh, going to be a lot harder. Going to have a unicorn there ready and waiting. And he's going first. And with a preparation of rights to search for Unico. Yeah, kaleidoscope for Herald of the Arc Light with the Unico. Unico and no Max C from Sep Dung. That is important because now Timis can go through the whole combo. We might see a first turn lock here. Very possible. So he got the Brian Egg. Brian Egg sent straight to the graveyard. But no, he's not going for it. Um, he ends up with uh, Dark Hole in hand. He, he's got the Valkyrus to stop his Unicorn being destroyed. I think that's all he really needed there. Uh, my German is a little bit rusty, but that looks like Snap Steel. Yes. Schnappstahl. <laughs> Sorry, it just sounds so much like Snatch Deal. <laughs> <laughs> so there we got a Lure of Darkness from Seb for his opening move. Just to confirm, there's a Book of Moon face down behind the Necros of Unicor for Timis. And, and there is the Snatch Deal, but unfortunately it's not going to do anything because of the Book of Moon. Ah, that's the perfect counter to that card. Oh, though he's giving it to him. Ooh. If... I wonder if he realizes if he flips that face down, he gets to keep that card. I'm pretty certain he's aware of that. Hmm. All the players that have been around like for long enough are aware that equip spells yeah, don't okay, work on face down monsters. Maybe sometimes. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's whether because obviously if Snatch Steel is destroyed, it returns back to your ha back to your side of the field. But it's been so long that we see really seen Snatch Steel. Yeah. Like well, it, it was back in. A, lo a long format that a lot of players spell really ruler doing, yeah yeah um I've, I've seen players that do not immediately activate book of moon because they wait for mst to appear from their deck and then they they get the card back so it's it's a little bit a better trade because the book of moon just results in your opponent attacking over it so so what's the point yeah now he's attributed uh, that means shadow beast is he lying there in wait on Sepp's side of the field. He's going to be able to draw some cards. Nice little poke right at the start of the game. The only tribute monster that you really play in Shadow. So, Temis drew into Necro's Mirror. And he's still got the Valkyrus in hand. I think he's very, very aware that the Shadow deck is explosive, as explosive as it gets. Yeah. At, at least the one that Sepp brought to the table. And this is why he always has the Valkyrus ready. Beast gets destroyed by Dark Hole. That means Sepp gets to draw a card for the graveyard effect of the Beast. And now he's using El Shadow Fusion. And that is an. Light artifacts are light, so that is going to be a construct. Falco's effect, and then construct effect. That's how he's building the chain. So oh, it's the, the other way around. Chain link one is uh, Falco, chain link two. Yeah. It's a big problem of the Stoll archetype that there's Ooh. a. And he has dropped Dragon into the graveyard to target the, fa the face down card which will more than likely be changed. Yep, there it is. Okay, uh, just letting uh, them know that that was Falco. And then he draws the card for the beast. And again, at this point in time, Sepp is, has exposed himself to a Trishula play. Yep. Uh, what can he do to avoid that? Uh, play the Shadow Fusion, because he's played no Shadow Fusion this turn. And with Hedgehog and Glow Up Bulb, make a Shekinaga. That would stop a Trishula play against him. And yep. give him a big 3,000 defense. 
monster. Yeah. And he's considering that, I guess. Okay. But did he do the, the El Shadal fusion at the end of his opponent's turn? Mm, he was in response to the dark call from his hand. Yeah. I'm not sure if he... So he summoned that this turn, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. I, I, if it I'm if it came out in his turn, I'm I'm not sure if he used the El Shadal fusion at the end of his opponent's turn. But uh, again, it was in response to the dark hole, so it must have been in his opponent's turn. Okay, so that is legal then. Yep. And uh, there we go. He does have the big monsters, and he's not attacking just yet. He instead goes for. Oh, Leo. Yeah. And he's unaffected by card effects except in main your opponent's main phase two. Is it card effects or is it targeting effects? Uh, so we can find that out. Yeah, we're going to have Leo up on the screen in just a second. And Ooh, um, and there's the Shekinaga. Also, did Timis drop a max C? He did. Yes, so he's drawing cards. There we go. So here's the Leo for you guys on our app now. It's going to be on the right-hand side of the screen in just a second. Now, it does actually have 3,100 attack, which means uh, decisive armor will still get it. Oh, it's targeted, sorry. Yeah, it's only targeted. This is why it's a big problem for, well, most decks, except for the Burning Abyss, that have a couple of car outs like Regeki Break and like Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Okay, Skomato was put to hand. It's been normal summoned. And there's a big attack from okay. Sep. However, we know that Valkyrus is in hand. But um, if he attacks with Leo first... Hey, Valkyrus isn't a targeting effect. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just bring up the card text there just to make sure of that, but I'm pretty sure that it doesn't need to target the monster. When it declares an attack, you can banish one Necros card, discard this card, negate the attack, then end the battle phase. Yeah, I think it automatically targets. Yeah, it must target that. Because it's targeting the attacking monster. Otherwise, that Gungnir play wouldn't make sense that we mentioned before. Well, I thought that that was because the attack was no longer happening. But we should find that out. Right. So, it seems like Timus is taking the damage, isn't he? Hmm. Although... Yeah, that's putting him on very low life points. It does not target. There we go. Okay, so he's attacking again. Yeah, but the, the way that I see it is that it... Um, and Tim is okay, so Valkyrus, you should be able to El Shadow Fusion. And now he yeah. can make sure that the monster that is attacking is no longer on the field so, yeah. when the effect resolves. And if that happens, the battle phase does not end. And that means Sepp gets another attack. Another two attacks, yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be 3,100. And that is that's it. the equalizer. Yeah. Excellent. We saw what, how the Shadol deck is actually winning against Necros, even though Sepp was... It can't use... Valkyrus because yeah. of El Shadow Fusion. It's denying it the big, big card that says, nope, you're not going to attack. So I think that with with that play, with that that game just now, Seb Dung was able to quiet all the players that were doubting his abilities, yeah. really. <laughs> when he said the, the game before where he ended up winning, but where he was very, very lucky. Um, this time around, he, he, did, he wasn't really that lucky. Mm, he didn't, well... No, no, he wasn't that lucky. I think he just played it out in perfection, made the most of his moves, and also he attacked over the Max C challenge. Yes. Which was impressive. Yeah. You've got our judges and staff who are just checking on time there. Yeah, we got a little bit of extra time, of course. The main event might already be in extra times. I don't know I don't exactly. That it is at the moment. I've not heard any sort of call. Whatsoever. Yeah, I think they have a few more minutes at least. But time is of the essence here. We're, we're getting close to the end of the match. Yeah.
it's 1-1 and you really don't want to be in a situation of time during that also in between games this is like one of the best opportunities or well in between matches if uh, you guys have for example already seen the deck features that we have been showing you throughout the day yesterday or the interview with Peter Frottier you can always check out the written coverage of our event where we have all the statistics ready for you so you don't have to wait for us to bring them up you can just look at them whenever you want <laughs> in your own time and um, check out how many players showed up for Prague, where they came from, what they are playing, and so on. Yep, you can go and see a, uh, a lot of articles by our friend Rudy. Yes, who uh, has quite some interesting pieces. For example, we have again a feature, or we're going to have a feature, of the duelists from Kuwait that made the trip. And I find that very, very exciting that these guys are so dedicated to the game. Uh, there's also a nice little poll there uh, on there, which you can vote on what your favorite card is from the Secret Forces. Yeah. Uh, there is a clear winner at the moment, which is Vanity's Emptiness, and the second following up is uh, Brionic. Yeah, those two cards. And funnily enough, even though there are a lot of other Necros cards on there, um, your camera one, your send you camera one, two, and three is actually coming in third. There. It's not exactly fair because it's three cards at the same time. Yeah, but it's whether you like the Yosen It's basically asking, do you like the Yosenju archetype or do you like the Necros archetype? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here are the cards in hand. Oh, well, the first one, three cards now. For Temis Gitsis, he's got a Necros of Unicorn, Denko Seka, and Maxi. So Denko Seka came in from the side deck, and that's not that surprising. As did Mirror Force there. Yeah. Mirror Force, not that good. Just actually checking that. No, he is actually main, main decking it. Mirror Forces. Just checking, just checking. Do, do, do. No. The Ice Barrier, Mirror Force. No, he, he did bring that in from the side. Also, these, he's not running any trap cards. He's not running he? any trap cards. Yeah. No. Okay. As you don't, usually with net cross. So, Septang kicking things off in the deciding duel in round nine. One of these guys is going to have a shot at advancing to the top 32. The other guy is going to be out of competition after this round. He's not going to be able to become a YCS winner. He starts with Mathematician, sending... Squimata, which then sends Beast. And that will draw him a card. And thin out the deck, of course, which is also very important. Yes, he really wants to be able to make the big plays that he made earlier. He ends turn. Now there is a unicorn, a Manju of the 10,000 hands, a Dark Hole, Maxi, Mirror Force, Denko, Seca. So, I mean, I, I understand the mathematician play. We've seen that a lot in Madrid and Milan. But isn't that Trishula now, please? It can be. Um, mm. Unfortunately, there wasn't actually really anything else he could do. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. And if you look at his his hand, I mean, it's a, a global two Majesty's Fiends, a Gauze, and a Kaiku. Okay, that's the Necros Kaleidoscope sending the Herald of the Arclight to the graveyard. That allows Temis to bring out the, the Necros yeah. of Unicor. Yep, and then he can fetch himself a ritual spell card. Now, this is actually going to allow him to be able to overlay for Laval Val Chain, although he's going to attack first. Yeah, why not? Get in some damage first. So, well, good news for Septang. He didn't get Trishulat in the first turn. No, but he also gets to draw, gets to draw a card as well. Yeah, so I, I would almost say this is like the ideal uh, end result for him, except for, well, Tim is only passing. Oh, Gors. And Gors hits play after the attack of Manchu. Let's bring up Gors. If you are a long-time follower, you're going to be familiar with the card, 100%. When he came out, it was such a difference maker. Yeah. And now we often... We, we actually don't see it that often anymore. Basically, if your opponent uh, attacks you directly, you got no field. You can special summon the Emissary of Darkness. Yeah. And uh, I believe they're actually using a bit of paper as a token there. Yeah. It's going to be a 1,400... 1,400 token. And uh, now Timis, again, needs to find a way to clear the field. And he, he has the timely dark hole. I mean, he's not going to activate it now. But it wouldn't actually uh, be great for him to do that right now. Yeah. 
to be getting rid of his Unicor. But his Unicor is probably going to go anyway because he doesn't have a Valkyrus. He does have a Brionic in hand, which means that he could go and get a Valkyrus. Yeah, and that's... Interestingly, I don't think he activated the effect of Herald to be able to go and get himself a uh, Ritual Spell card. Yeah, if our app is to be believed and up to date, he forgot about the Herald. Ooh, dear. That seems unlikely, knowing him. No, it's, it's weird. These super Greeks, they live and breathe Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, can you just check for... Is there any way you can check for me? Sorry, is Herald of the Artifact definitely just ritual spells? Or does it have to be... No, it, oh, one ritual monster. He added the Brionic. Ah, ah, it's even more flexible than I was aware of. Yeah, I thought he was just ritual spell cards. Yeah. Wow. So this is how he got the Brionic, and now he's got a Necros of Valkyros in his hand. His field is the Mirror Force and the Dark Hole. So he, he seems quite protected, to be honest. Yeah. Val Valkyros in hand with a Mirror Force on the field, and Ooh. then there's also the Dark Hole for whatever happens. Now, there is a Mind Control. Also a card we haven't seen in a while. And you can tell Tim is asking the judge how much time is left in the round, I think. He was uh, looking it up, telling him two minutes, I think, if I got that correctly. So we're running out of time, and at the moment, Tamis is ahead. But that could... That could change any moment. Yeah. Now, looking at it at the moment, the, the biggest problem that we've got is that a mirror force is now going to happen. Duh. That's hurting Seb a lot. He just now, summoned a Majesty's Fiend. Yes, without any sort of shadow cards in hand, he is not in a good position. If he had a shadow card in his hand, he could mind control and then fuse with the unicorn. Yeah, so now his hand is another copy of Majesty's Fiend that's not going to do much. He's had to pass his turn. And basically, all that needs to happen now is Valkyrus needs to hit the field, and there's a Shurip to help it happen. Yeah, it's, I would say, extremely strong position for Temis. Yeah. What is Shurip? Oh, and there's Denko Seka. Of course, that is an ex a pretty much enough life points there. Yeah, Denko Sega, in this point, just a vanilla card because the effect is not active. But you're not going to mind that too much with 1,700. And a Max C being dropped prior to the battle phase to make sure that even a Gorse would allow Tamis to draw more yeah. cards. And that's 5,900 damage in total. I do believe. It's 1, 7, and 1, 4 is 3, 1. And the unicorns. Oh, got it's just three, four, isn't it? And there's the cowboy for game. There is the cowboy. We cowboy for game. Cowboy for game. Cowboy for game. Ooh, oh <laughs> dear. But still, very, very exciting games between these two. Yep. Sebdang now out of the competition, but he showed that he he, he picked up a big fight. Yeah. Like yeah, he, he yeah he lost this game, but he that second game you can understand why he's here right now. Yeah. Like, um, definitely. It, it was very exciting. I think for him, it's the, the biggest problem is it's an.